So let's do the question number seven. From the following particulars furnished by Mr. X for the year ended 31st of March 2018, you are requested to compute his total income and tax payable for the assessment year 2018-19. A. Mr. X retired on 31st of December 2017 at the age of 58 after putting in 25 years of 25 years and 9 months of service from a private company at Mumbai. B. He was paid a salary of 25,000 per month and a house rent allowance of Rs. 6,000 per month. He paid rent of Rs. 6,500 per month during his tenure or service. C. On retirement, he was paid a gratuity of Rs. 3,50,000. He, he was not covered by the Payment of Gratuity Act. His average salary in this regard may be taken as Rs. 24,500. Mr. X had not received any gratuity at any point of time earlier other than his gratuity. Point number D. He had accumulated a leave of 15 days per annum during the period of his service. This was encashed by Mr. X at the time of his retirement. A sum of Rs. 3,15,000 was received by him in this regard. His average salary may be taken as Rs. 24,500. Employer allowed 30 days leave per annum. Point number E. After retirement, he ventured into textile business and incurred a loss of Rs. 80,000 for the period up to 31st of March 2018. F. Mr. X has invested Rs. 62,500 in public provident fund and Rs. 37,500 in national saving certificates. So let us solve uh, the question number 7. Now before we solve, we will make some calculations. First we will talk about the HRA. Now as per section 10, house rent allowance is exempt to the extent of the least of the following three amounts. Now he has received uh, actual HRA of Rs. 6000 for 9 months. So that comes to Rs. 54000. Then the second one is rent paid in excess of 10% of the salary. So his uh, uh, rent paid is 6500 and 10% of the salary comes to 2500 per month. So 6500 minus 2500 into 9 months. So that comes to 36000. Then the third one is 50% of the salary. So which comes to 112500. Now how we have calculated? He is getting a, a salary of 25,000 rupees per month for 9 months. So that comes to 2,25,000. So 50% would be 1,12,500. Now we move on to the gratuity part. Now gratuity of rupees 3,6,250 will be exempt under section 1010 being the minimum of the following amounts. So first he has received a gratuity of 3,50,000. And then second half month average salary for each year of completed service would be 3,6250 which is half into his average salary which is 24,500 which is given in the question and he has worked for 25 years and 9 months but the completed service will be taken for 25 years. So that comes to 3,6250 and the statutory limit is 10 lakhs. Now third we talk about the leave encashment. Now leave encashment is exempt up to the least of the following. First we take the actual amount. So he has received 3,15,000 which is there in the question. Second 10 months average salary. His average salary is also given in the question which is 24,500 into 10. So that comes to 2,45,000. Now third would be the cash equivalent of the unavailed leave calculated on the basis of maximum 30 days for every year of actual service rendered to the employer from whose service he retired. So that figure comes to 3,6250 and we will discuss how this figure has been arrived in our coming slide. Fourth, the statutory limit is 3 lakhs. Now let us talk about how we have calculated his leave. Since the leave entitlement of Mr. X as per his employer rules is 30 days credit for each year of service 
and he has accumulated 15 days per annum during the period of his service. So he would have availed or taken a balance taken the balance 15 days leave every year. So the leave entitlement of Mr. X on the basis of 30 days of for every year of actual service rendered by him to the employer would be like this. So he has 30 days per year he is entitled for the leave entitlement multiplied for, by 25 years. So that means he will have a total 750 days of leave entitlement. But he has already taken some leaves. So we have to reduce that. So leave taken availed by Mr. X during the period of his service. In the question it is given that he has taken uh, 15 days leave every year uh, and he has worked for 25 years. So that means he has availed 375 days leave. So that means the balance now will remain as uh, 375. So earned leave to the credit of Mr. X at the time of his retirement would be 375 days cash equivalent of earned leave to the credit of Mr. X at the time of his retirement. So which comes to 375 uh, multiplied by 24,500 which is his average salary and we will divide it by 30 for calculating the per day leave. So that uh, per day leave multiplied by 375 days the figure comes to 3,6250. So now let us compute the total income and tax liability of Mr. Siddhant for the assessment year 2018-19. So first we talk about his salary income since he has worked for 9 months so his salary is 25,000 so his total salary for the year would be 2,25,000. Then we talk about the HRA house rent allowance he has actually received 54,000 which is 6,000 rupees per month into 9 months of service. Then we will exempt uh, under, he will get an exemption under section 10 which we have calculated earlier which is 36,000 which is the least amount under section 10. So that means only 18,000 will be uh, taxable under the head house rent allowance. Then we talk about the gratuity. The actual amount received is 3,50,000. So he will also get an exemption under section 1010 which we have calculated earlier the least amount that is 6,250. So that means the balance amount will be taxable 43,750. Then we talk about the leave encashment. So actual amount received is 3,15,000 and the exemption under section 1010 is 2,45,000 which also we calculated earlier. So that means only 70,000 will be taxable. So his gross salary comes to 356750 now we move on to calculate his profit and gains of business or profession. So he started with a textile business and suffered a loss of rupees 80,000. Now this has to be carried forward in the next year because this cannot be set off against his salary income. So uh, nothing will be uh, allowed as a loss in the year. So his gross total income will then be only 356,750. And then he will be allowed deduction under section 80C. He has made an investment in public provident fund 62,500 and he has also invested in national saving certificate for 37,500. So that comes to 1 lakh. So since it is below 1 lakh 50,000, so he will be entitled for entire 1 lakh as a reduction. So his total income will come to now uh, 2 lakh 56,750. So now we calculate his tax. So we know that up to 2 lakh 50,000 there is no tax on 6,750. 5% works out to be 338. Now he will be entitled on a rebate under section 87A to the extent of 338 rupees since his taxable income is below 350,000 and he is a non he is a resident individual and the maximum rebate allowed is 2500. So he will be entitled for a full rebate of tax. So that means there will be no tax payable and it will be nil.